That's right. That's right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What's going on, everybody? I am John, the Jote, and you are listening to another episode, thankfully, of The Jote Show. So what's going on, everybody? So listen, okay, we're going to talk about a few different things today. I'm looking at my notes right now, just so that I'm not all over the place, and you know how I get. So first off and foremost, thanks for tuning in. This will be a shorter episode because it's just me. I'm not interviewing anybody. I'm not being interviewed. It's just me. You're stuck with me. So what have I been up to recently? You know how the show goes. It's the Joe show. I'm the John of all trades because why be a Jack when you can be a John? Um, I love that tagline and I'm, I'm just going to use it until somehow I get hit with a copyright infringement, which I don't think that will happen. With that being said, what have I been up to recently? Well, I have been doing a lot of photography, believe it or not, which is my passion. I love photography. I've been doing a lot of rec photography, recreational photography for the local sports. It is soccer season, and I got approached last November about doing the team photos for one of the local local rec parks. Let's say that. So they reached out to me, and I went. I came up with some pricing sheets and I I had to come up with it because I've never done photography like that. So I got it together. I came up with it and um, I I gave it to the person on the board of directors for that particular recreational park. It took them a while to get back to me. And finally, I reached out and I'm like, hey, do we have an update? You know, we're getting close to the season started. Yada, yada, yada. Nothing. I didn't really hear anything. I'm like, okay, that's. Not really a good sign, right? A few days later, they reached back out. Long story short, after going back and forth for about a month, they decided that they wanted to keep using the same people that they had already used. Now, I knew that a lot of their teams and parents and not really the players because at that that athlete level, the players are still children. But I knew a lot of the parents weren't really happy with that company for a bunch of numerous reasons i'm personally going to leave out that company's name because at the end of the day this is not about bad mouthing anybody right because we don't hate a hustler we don't but some people don't like over editing there are some of the photos that over edit um or that are over edited the the biggest issue that i find that most people have is how long it would take to get their photos me personally because you know i i have a we have a little one. They play for this team. So we also kind of complain about how long it takes to get our photos. Now, I was complaining about getting photos back at the end of the season. Well, there are some people who will tell you they haven't gotten their photos ever from a year ago, two years ago. I'm like, holy cow. Okay. So I, you know, I figured it would be nice to throw my hat into the the area, like into the arena to become their photographer because why not? It's one of my passions. I would love to make a full-time gig out of photography. They decided to stay with their company that they were using. I I, I didn't really get an explanation, but I it it's business. You know, what am I gonna be angry and say, why didn't you choose me? No, it's business. It's a business option uh, choice. It's a business opportunity for me, and it just didn't work out. At least I thought it didn't work out. I got approached by a bunch of individuals that I I know because, like I said, my kid's on one of the soccer teams. So people know me. They know that I've done photos for other parents in the past. um, And they're like, hey, are you going to do soccer photos this year? And I'm like, well, you know, I, I was trying to get the contract for for our local park, but it fell through and it, you know, they, they decided to stay with who they're using and they're like, yeah, I know. And we don't want to use them and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, Oh, okay. Well, look, if you don't want to use them, of course, I'm, I'm, I'm you know, I will set something up. Let's get your photos done and we'll do them my way. And, you know, I can, I can have that for next soccer season and be like, Hey, this is what I've done. You know, do you think we can make something work here? Well, let me tell you that escalated. Because it went from doing uh, photos for three, four, maybe five kids 
to about 30 of them. I had three full teams. One team was my own because I'm coaching, and I gave them the option. I, I didn't say, hey, I'm, I'm coaching. You got to use me. No. I gave them the option, and I said, hey, this is who they're using again for photos. You know, we had the option for me to use, like for you guys to use me if you want. I can send you some of my work. Make the decision. They wouldn't even look at my work. <laughs> they're like, of course, we're going to use you. We're not using them. We don't want to use them. I'm like, okay, well, great. So fast forward, another team messages me. I'm like, wow, okay. So now I'm doing my team. I'm doing photos for another team. Wait for it. Another team messages me. So at this point, I have now three full teams on the schedule to do photos for. I'm like, holy cow. I'm starting to feel the pressure, right? Because I've never done photos like this at that volume. Well, on top of that, I had about, hmm, let's say, seven or eight individual kids who decided to come to me for their photography. And they, they didn't come with their full team. So that's why I call them individuals. At the end of the day, I, I, I did photos for about 30 kids, which is phenomenal. Now, I offer different packages and uh, print packages and stuff like that. And I had one package that was meant to be only digital because I know some people like digital. I know photographers don't like giving digitals out. But because I'm getting new or I'm getting into this field as far as have I been shooting a while? Of course. Have I done recreational sport photography at this volume to where I'm ordering hundreds of prints at this point? No. So I decided to kind of sweeten the pot for them was why don't I throw in a digital copy of your athlete's photo? And at that point, well, now you're getting your photo. As soon as I get it edited, the full team, I get it together. I put it in a file. I send you the link for you to download that photo. So why is that a big deal? Because now you have your photo. You know what it looks like. You picked it out of three poses that I did. And that photo is going to be what your prints look like. But you have that photo. You have the full release. I think the photo template that I use is sized by 8 by 10 So you can take it to wherever you want and order prints ASAP. Now, in order to get that free digital copy, you have to buy a print package anyways. And my print packages start at like $20. So the best part is not only am I giving them their digital photo so they can see their kid and they're like, oh, my God, this is what my child is going to look like. This is what the photos look like. And we love them. Now they can either go print and um, get extra copies or they can share it and post it on their social media, which the good thing is, is most of them that post it are so happy to get it so fast that they are now tagging me in it having extra people message me about doing more photos and this and that. And I'm like, holy crap, let's go. Hey guys, it's John and the Joe. Did you know that you can help support this podcast by joining us on Patreon? That's right. Super low membership cost. I'm talking under $5. So what does it get you? What does being a Jote, a certified Jote, get you on Patreon with the Jote Show? Well, let me tell you, it gets you bonus content. It gets you bonus episodes. And the best part, those episodes are all video. So you get to look at us. You get to laugh at us. If I have a guest on, we do bonus episodes. It's called the podcast after the podcast, where we talk about things that we didn't talk about on the show. We, it's not topic driven. It's more of a conversation. Join today. Help support us. It's amazing. I look forward to seeing you there. Become a certified Jote today. Fast forward to this past week. Well, after I started adding photos and posting them and other, other parents were tagging me and posting them, my inbox blew up. I had two other teams message me. Hey, can we get in? I had other individuals like, hey, we missed the other team's photo because we thought that they were using the people that we didn't want to use. How do we get our photos taken? 
So I got to be honest, I hadn't even thought about doing a makeup day. So I'm like, okay. I sat down. I looked, I looked at my schedule. I saw what was going on. I'm like, you know what? This could be good for me. One, I had to, kids on my own team not be able to make it because of other obligations. It's in the middle of Mardi Gras season when we did it. The whole nine yards. So I'm like, yeah, let's do another day. So I got with the venue that I used. It's a local gym. I said, hey, can I get the space for another couple hours on this day, on that date? And like, yeah, absolutely. It's free open. Let's, you know, let's get you in there. I was like, holy shit, let's go. So as of right now, I've got two more teams coming in and probably about 15 individuals. So I, I'm looking at another 30 or so kids that I'm doing photos for for soccer. Now, I all those other 30 that I did, I knocked out all of the edits in a week. Don't get me wrong. Was it a lot of work? Unbelievable amount of work. Did I get it done? Yes. Were my feet hurting standing at my desk? Yes. But I got it done. Now I have to format it, get it ready, send it off to the printers. But remember, they have their digital copies, so they already have their photo. Now they're just waiting on the physical prints, but they already know what their kid's photo looks like. That's the big part here. Fast forward to tomorrow, because as of recording, this is the next day, tomorrow morning, I have more kids to go photograph. I can't complain. I can't make this up. I'm super freaking stoked. Let's go back to last Friday. Last Friday, we have a Disney trip booked. It's been planned for a while. It's been paid for for a while. That's part of why I needed to rush and get these edits done because I wanted all of my edits done for these soccer photos before I leave town because I don't have a laptop. I have an iPad Pro, but I don't do any of my editing on that. I do all of my editing, logo design, marketing, businessing, everything on my desktop computer. It's built for it. It's meant for it. It thrives for it. My iPad, I can make graphics. I can do this. I can do that. But it's for my good high-end stuff, I use my desktop. So I needed to make sure I got everything done before we left. And guess what? I did. So we got back in town from Disney last night. This is Friday. So we went from Friday to Friday, technically Saturday, because we left Friday at midnight last week. We decided that we would drive the whole way, leaving the house at midnight from the New Orleans area to the Disney area, which online says is about nine hours, but it doesn't calculate the loss of an hour. It it, it averages about 10 hours for us driving between stopping for restroom breaks and coffee, which I mean, I, let me tell you, it was hard to do without coffee. I made coffee or actually I didn't. I made tea to bring with me, but I had spent all day Friday working on edits and getting the house ready and getting final stuff packed. We left at midnight on no sleep for a 10 hour drive. Needless to say, it was brutal. But between three of us in the car who were able to drive, we were able to make it work. So we get there. We love Disney. We stayed at a value resort. I think it's considered a value resort. It's the Art of Animation Resort. It's my first time staying there. This is only my second time to Disney. And we're waiting on our rooms. And we were staying in um, the... I, I, I refuse to call them the peasant rooms because you're staying at a Disney resort. So how much of a peasant is it? But at the Art of Animation, you have family suites, which have like an actual bedroom and then like a living room area and um, a, a pullout couch that turns into a bed and then a, a Murphy bed that turns your kitchen table into a bed. Well, those were more expensive. We stayed at the Little Mermaid ones, which were cheaper and they were just like your classic hotel room. You walk in, you've got your bed or your beds, little mini fridge, stuff like that. So we go, we're waiting to be checked in. We get there super freaking early because we left at midnight. Check-ins at like 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, something like that. We got to Disney for like 11 o'clock. So we're walking around because if you've ever been to a Disney resort, it's all themed. So it's like the Little Mermaid area has like huge statues of king triton and ursula and just everything 
so they had four different themed sections, right? You've got the Little Mermaid, which is where we were. You've got the Lion King, which is indoor suites. You've got Nemo, which has the big pool by it. You know, fantastic looking because I just love, 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 love Disney stuff. And then there was the car section, which we loved. We thought the car section was fantastic. So we're waiting. We're waiting. Finally, boom. We get the notification. Our room is ready. We pull it up and it says family suite. And we're like, what? So they send us the the information for us to go check into the room. We got upgraded from the Little Mermaid all the way to the Cars Family Suites. Now, we did not get an explanation for this. Not that I cared because, wow, the room was fantastic. We got upgraded. We kind of figured out because when we got there, there were a ton of cheerleaders. There was a cheer competition going on. We think that they might have overbooked the value part of the value resort, the Little Mermaid part, and they didn't have rooms ready. So we got upgraded to the bigger, better room. And guess what? I am mad. Room got upgraded from day one. Super stoked. We go, I want to say the first day we do Animal Kingdom, followed by Epcot, which let me tell you, Epcot, I love Epcot. Ate so much junk, though. Drank so much junk, though. Next day was Magic Kingdom. We had an off day where we kind of went and did some shopping at Disney Springs. Ended it off at Hollywood Studios in Galaxy's Edge. So if you know me, you understand how big of a nerd I am. It was wonderful. That was last week. Decided to leave. Got up early. Packed up the car. Had breakfast. And then headed out about quarter to 11. Got home about quarter to 10 last night. So, ugh. And we got lost. I kid you not. I got lost. And I'm pretty sure Florida was trying to keep me prisoner. And I have a whole extra bonus episode that's going to be about Florida keeping me prisoner and not letting me leave the state. I'm not kidding. I'm going to have that as a bonus episode. And the reason I call it a bonus episode is because, yes... I had a lot of people asking me, how do I support you? You know, I can share you stuff. I can do this. I can do that. But I want to do more. What, you know, what would help? So I decided to, um, with the advice from others, start a Patreon. And I did. I started a Patreon page with some bonus content. And I'm still uploading bonus content. And long-term members will get um, photography prints. I want to say I think it's at six months of subscribed member you get a five by seven photography print um after that i think at a year you get an eight by ten i i have to double check the statistics but it's all on the patreon page um the patreon page will be linked under the episode um we will have bonus episodes and um we will have a whole bonus podcast when i do interviews when i do an interview and we do the podcast for the Jote Show. We're going to do a podcast after the podcast where I ask my guest about what did they think about when I asked them to be on my show? You know, did they prepare to be on the show? Did they just kind of come willy nilly and say, hey, this is me? All of that's going to be on Patreon. It's a super low subscription. I think I have it at less than $5 and it will all come and help me build the podcast, grow the community, and go on and, you know, thrive. All episodes on there will be video content. So the episode that I'm going to put on there after this about being trapped in Florida will be a video episode. So you'll enjoy that. After Disney, one of the things I had to struggle with on Disney, I have school that I'm in. I'm online school, finishing my graphic design degree. And I had homework due. So luckily I can do it from my iPad. It tends to be a little bit of a pain in the butt, but I was able to get part of it done. I had to ask my professors for an extension. I understand that if they decide not to, that's really nobody's fault but my own. You know, it's just lack of prep. And I mean, look, I've got good enough grades to where if I do miss those assignments and they don't let me make them up, I'll be fine, but I just don't like doing that. So, but the school semester is 
or it's not a semester. I want to say it's a trimester is how it's referred to because it's only eight week terms and I've only got 15 days left of this term and I can't wait for it to be over because my classes I'm doing okay in. I'm doing well in one. I'm doing okay in the other, but I don't care for the courses. They're not in my field of study. One's a philosophy course, one's an ideology course, but I have to take them because they're humanitarian courses and it's ugh, it's all needed for the degree, but it's got to get done. So might as well get good grades on it, right? But the next trimester or term, I actually start my designing classes again. And that's where I'm going to thrive because that's that's what I'm doing. That's what I'm there for. That's where I'm at as far as school. It's going. I'm trucking along. We're getting shit done. Today's episode is brought to you by Bayou Battlegrounds. Spring into action with Bayou Battlegrounds. As the flowers bloom and the sun shines brighter, it's time to level up your springtime festivities. Why settle for the ordinary when you can turn your event into an extraordinary nerf battle with Bayou Battlegrounds? We offer fun for all ages, adults, kids, team building. Do you have a birthday party coming up? Maybe you have a corporate get together. What about team building activities? A bridal party, bachelorette party. Go to www.bayoubattlegrounds.com to book today. Here's what's coming up, right? I was reached out to today about presenting my photography to the local board of recreational people because it's an individual board for a specific recreational park. They asked me if I can meet them today. And I just, I didn't have anything put together. I didn't want to go in there and wing it. Um, so I'm, I'm going and I'm going to uh, put everything together, get it all organized, tell them this is what I offer. This is kind of the time frame you're looking at, but this is what I give you so that it kind of holds you over to that time frame. And I, I don't know when that's going to happen. I would assume sometime within the next week or so, because I said, hey, give me a week to get this presentation together for you. I'll get it together. You let me know when you want to meet up and I'll come and show you guys what I can do. My book adventures. So I am about halfway through one of my books. I received another book as a gift and I found a free version of the audiobook called Atomic Habits. I'm super excited to get into that. I don't really know what it is. If I had to guess, it would be analyzing your habits and you know how to make better habits or get rid of habits that are destroying you internally. I, I, I got home today and immediately reached out to about 25 potential real estate clients because it's spring markets right here. Like, it's here. It's not even... Oh, well, the spring market's coming up. No, Mardi Gras is over. We are middle of February. Spring market is here, boo. So if you're listening to this and you're looking to sell your property and you're like, oh, when do I list it? Now. You list it now. Actually, you should have listed it in December because a lot of the market that is already flying off was listed in December when I told people to list. But no, we don't want to listen. That's fine. There's still time. Don't wait until March and April to be like, oh, man, it's a spring market. Let's get listed. Well, yeah, but the houses are already by like they're they're being bought. They're going. They're flying. Will you still go off? Yeah. So I mean, some people don't know about the spring market. The spring market is when the buyers are influxed and they're getting into the areas. They're buying the houses, getting ready to close at the end of the spring, early summer, move over the summer. That way kids don't have to worry about transitioning school and and doing all that in the middle of the school year. So they can buy their houses, move in, take their family vacation, start the next school year. I've got a few buyers that are in the works. Uh, one of them is an out-of-state buyer from California. She's looking at waterfront property, her and her husband. Her husband uh, travels a lot internationally. So it's hard to get it to where they come down. They're from California. They came down early, uh, middle of November. I brought, I showed them about 20 houses. None of them just fit what they needed. Well, now the good thing is that's November. We're in February. We have a whole new selection of houses for them to come in and take a look. We are getting ready to, you know, set that back up for them to get back down here to go through another tour. I've got all that lined up. I'm just waiting on the, hey, here we come. So that's what's been going on. Um, again, I've got that bonus episode out on Patreon. 
I hope you enjoy it. It's going to be a video content about how I got trapped in Florida trying to come home from Disney World. The mouse would not let me escape. I'm not joking. It's it's wild. I can't wait to tell you guys. So until then, keep hustling. If you've got any questions, any feedback, reach out to me. Um, if you want to be a guest on a show and you do a m- multiple joke shit, give me a call. Reach out. Let's connect. Let's make some magic happen, guys. Talk to you soon.